Hello, Petra. Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm fine. <laughs> well, sorry about that, that we could not uh, do a uh, live streaming, but uh, technical difficulties of Facebook, but uh, now we are down here. We're going yeah. to share it as, as we were planning, but now recorded. And um, I'm very pleased to be working with you again. Uh, last year we worked in a Tantra Shamanic Festival and one year before we did it uh, also. Yeah. And but now because of the, the COVID and all these things that are happening, we are going to be doing this weekend one event on the live. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it's going to be about sacred embodiment. Uh, and uh, I would like that you tell us more or less what is for you sacred embodiment? Ah, uh, yes, what is that? Well, for me it is how I am as aware as possible and very much in my body. Like how can I be as present as possible in, in my in my life, you know, here and now, as a whole being. Yeah. What is it for you, Anand? Well, the, um, I believe that, uh, you know, I have been, uh, as you sharing for, for long time, a little bit of Tantra and Tantra Kaula and a little bit of shamanism the last six years. Yeah, and uh, within the last, I think, four years, I started to notice something that I never noticed before. I did the exercises, I shared the exercises uh, with people, mm -hmm. but this time, uh, like from four years ago, I started to really feel the connection of what I was doing, but incarnated, feel it on myself. And then once I feel it on myself, then I give it back again to the people. Yeah. And then I started to experiment what in theory is embodiment. And after all this time, you know, I was feeling, of course, I was sensitive, but I was sensitive to me. But I was not reciprocating in a dynamic way what I was feeling and what, what, what I was sensitive. Then therefore the the experience become completely different from any other ones. And then I understood now finally what was embodiment. Mm -hmm. And I was just touching somebody, allowed to feel what I was doing. And once I saw that there was a connection and was, once I saw what was the result of that, then I make it again mine, that sensation. And then it triggers something on me that it was not before. That is like a communication mm -hmm. of what you give and what you sense. And that gave me the perspective of embodiment. And now, yeah. for me, embodiment is like you say, no? being present to feel the colors, the light, where am I, yeah. uh, how am I living? And that embodiment is more powerful than ever for me is to yeah. feel and make it feel and resonate what I'm seeing. For example, the colors behind me that I'm connected to this beautiful pink because it's not red. And yeah. what is bringing to me this color onto me and what I can project again, that color into the room, the frequency. Yeah. And for me, embodiment is that, uh, yeah. Petra. Yeah, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, for me, embodiment is also that I, uh, the, the beliefs I have and the thoughts I have about life and it's like, how do I actually live that also in my, in my daily life, that it's not just, uh, thinking in my head but it's something that I experience and live every day you know in 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 my how I relate 
to to the nature, how I relate to other people. How does how does it uh, affect that? Actually, yeah. it's about, yeah, it's about how much can I actually enjoy life. Well, yes. <laughs> I think if if I am not embodied, I cannot enjoy life. Yes, exactly. I think the embodied something is to enjoy life, but. You know what I was thinking right now when you were saying to enjoy life and uh, yeah. everyday life is, is so, so powerful, the embodying experience is that it doesn't take you only to the physicality of it, but also mm. go to the energetical part, to the emotional part, and also to the astral part, you know, to the spiritual or to the soul level. And, but also, when we embody all these experiences not in only in the physical body the energetical and emotional body but also what can create in the psychic body um i think the miracle has started to happen there when you started to not only to embody the experience as you say just by one pure experience but every day and um, that's the amazing thing of the embodiment that it's not only the physicality it's not only one experience it's to make it longer as you say, and live it every every second of our lives. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what do you think about uh, how you can connect the embodiment to the what you do, Petra? That is, uh, I for the people that they they don't know yet, Petra. Petra is. Is not only a facilitator, but is a teacher on shamanism and uh, sexual magic shamanism. And the first time that I experienced an exercise with her, it was really amazing because it transported me and it really made me feel what she was doing a meditation that I said, you know, most of the times when you talk about shamanism, you don't, you don't experience sexuality or sensuality and the magic that it brings connected to shamanism, but Petra can bring, can bring into the experience a lot of things that I, before I could not experience. And for those ones that they don't know Petra, she's a wonderful shamanistic tantric teacher that had the knowledge and experience to give to us in the moment an embodied experience. And what I would like to know today is, how she related uh, shamanism and tantra to the to the to an embodied experience. Mm. Oh, thank you, Anand. It was kind of <laughs> kind of you. Um, mm. For me, it's it's a it's a lot about uh, the life energy, like. Uh, what I'm fascinating about and, and have a like well, eagerness and passion to understand is the life energy and the, the life energy that is in me, uh, the life energy that is in, in the nature around, you know, and sexuality, it's so much about that life energy. Uh, I live in Finland and we have springtime here right now. It's, it's, it's a really uh, it's an explosive time because the whole winter, the life energy has been like down in the ground, sleeping. And now when spring comes, it's like, it just starts to bubble, you know? It's, it's, and I already now it has come out in the leaves, so the life energy has already like wah, kind of made it its its way through, <laughs> and that's kind of a relief when it finally wah, comes out in the leaf, you know. And I I see our sexuality and and life energy like that, you know. It's like it's it's the the fluid is the sexuality is. The juices, you know, it, it has to it has to flow in our, uh, flow in us. Otherwise, we die. Exactly. Well, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, it's marvelous. But I'm in Madrid. I cannot have nature right now. But you know, <laughs> and you can see you can see very clearly here, you know, because people get really horny here in the springtime. You know? 
<laughs> also working in the city, but they're not enjoying the nature. But, you know, that's precisely what, um, you know, we project this. Uh, we were going to have a retreat uh, next week, uh, next week, next weekend mm -hmm. in Finland. And because of the COVID, we could not, uh, we could not make it happen. Yes. You now what we are going to be trying to do this weekend is to invite you a uh, one-day mini retreat. But uh, uh, that is going to be this Saturday. But the main thing I believe, Petra, is that uh, no matter what is happening outside in the world, and we were just talking about this before, yeah. that uh, all this energy that you have and you have tell us how it's exploding the, <laughs> the, the springtime of you, that's why it's make it so rich Tantra and Shamanism together, because it yeah. allowed us to connect to, to the life force. Yeah. Um, tantra gives us a life living experience to expand and liberate and connect us with the sexual energy, but also connect to the life force energy and to the energies of the world. Yeah. When, and I believe that, uh, as you said, Tantra and Shamanism are connected with the life force, with the elementals, what is the nature over there, but also the inside nature of, our, of ourselves. The, in ancient times, uh, we have this theory that is called uh, the correlation theory or the correspondence theory is that whatever is inside is outside. And whatever mm -hmm. is outside is inside. Yes. And myself, I was for the last eight months, I have been trying to study astrology yeah. just in an amateur way. And every time that I see all the planets and everything happening and uh, how it affects the nature of us, that's, that's the link. We are linked to the nature. We are linked to this life force energy. We are linked to the seasons. We are yeah. linked to the elementals of every season. And that's what it makes you human or nature. Link it to whatever is happening outside, is happening inside. And that magic that you're saying about the spring is so wonderful to hear it yeah. because Sexual energy awakes when it's springtime, ready to, mm. to copulate, ready to do things in summer, ready to, to expand in freedom. Yeah. I know all these things bring us again to the embodiment. And myself, I know that you in Finland, you grow, grow up in the nature. Mm. And myself, I grew up in a city, Mexico, Mexico City. And until very late in my, in my, my understanding, I captured nature. Even though I was in the nature, I didn't embody it. Yeah. And I believe that there's, there's an issue with the modern times, but most of the times we, didn't, we do not appreciate what we have until mm -hmm. you have conscious and you have growing in a different way. Now, now the new, the new generations, I think they have a different kind of awareness than us. I'm speaking about yes. myself and um, speaking about oh, my generation. But I believe people that they have the opportunity that live in the nature like you is completely different. And uh, to be living in the nature brings you more power to the embodiment, to the shamanism in a different way. Yes, it, uh, of course, because it, it gives uh, so much energy, you know. Yes, it, it's like it boosts, boosts my system. Yeah, it's, it gives a lot of energy to be in the nature and to, f to fill up. And I do agree that we have lo lost, lost ourselves quite a lot in, in our world today with so much disconnection yes and spending time in nature is really i am i am so grateful that i live in a little eco community in these times because i am out in the garden digging in the earth and it's like it's so wonderful <laughs> yeah uh, hmm. Petra, uh, and yeah. the first time that I uh, heard a tambour. Uh, Sorry, that I heard a drum. A drum. 
Yeah, it was it was before June, mm -hmm. and uh, it was really kind of funny because I didn't experience nothing. And I say, why did all these people are getting crazy about somebody drumming? And there was a meditation to come back to your animalistic thing, uh, and you choose your animal of power. And I was not understanding nothing. And then, of course, uh, one year after that, I got the opportunity to go to to Holbox, that is a little island in the Caribe of the peninsula of Yucatan. And I had a training of Tantra over there. Myself, my grandmother is Jackie, you know, from the Mayo tribe in, the, in Sonora, in the north side of Mexico. And uh, they have a, like an, a primitive shamanism. Yeah. And I was not connected to it. I, I, I saw my mother doing kind of rituals when it was raining or having a storm. She started to practice some kind of rituals that are embedded with the Christianism. It's just a mix yeah. now. And, but I, I, I didn't connect to this until I went to Holbox and then uh, I did a ritual in the water uh -huh. and a stupid of mine, um, I didn't know what I was doing. I, I know that I was doing a ritual, tantric ritual of initiation, but I, I wanted to do it in the water, in the sea water that is very calm. It's not uh, too many waves. Yeah. And that thing connect me to the power of the nature. Yeah. because the nature started to manifest and somebody some friends uh, that i have right now they told me and you are doing something with the nature you are doing shamanism i say you're crazy this is not shamanism <laughs> and then to make the short story after that year i met you uh-huh aha uh -huh. <laughs> then i went to the international congress of sexuality and you were there yeah. And then you did a beautiful exercise about the drum, uh, yeah. the animal, the sensual animal on you. Mm -hmm. so I started and then I felt it. I felt the magic that it was producing because for the first time I embodied that mm -hmm. there's a different kind of reality that I was not aware of it. Mm. And then I opened. And then mm -hmm. it was because of you and because of what happened in Holbox. Then... Mm -hmm. Now that I feel the drumming, I feel the nature, I feel the power of the trees. And it was a conjunction of things between whole books, your experience, and then it brings magic to me to connect again to shamanism. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if you can allow us to feel a little bit the, the power of the, what you do. Of the drumming. Well, yes. I, I do have the drum with me here, so we can do some of the drumming. Mm -hmm. And I mean, what the drum is, is like, it's the vibration. It, it, uh, it changes, you know, the, it changes our, our brain and the waves. And, and like you said, what you just said, it's like, if you are open, if you are open to life, magic will happen. And if you are closed, no matter who drums, whatever, it's nothing is going to happen. It's so much about the also the inner, your own inner state to to be willing to be open to life, to be willing to be open for love, to be in a state of love. And for me, the drumming is, it's something that can help us with that. Because the drum, I think it reminds us so much about the, the time we spend in the womb, when you hear your mother's heart beat as a drum. Yes. So, um, I don't know how the sound is is through through this uh, through these computers, but let's try a little bit. Just breathe. You can breathe into your nose and out through your mouth.
and you can uh, make a calling for yourself. It's like invite your soul. Thank you, Petra. Yeah, that was a very short uh, call <laughs> for the soul I, to be back in the body. Coming back to the topic, um, that's what uh, when the magic produces that you can embody it. Uh, what um, for those ones that they are seeing us. Mm -hmm. When we are open to this, we're embodied what she's channeling in this precise moment. Um, in Tantra, we believe, and in shamanism, we believe that we are channels of the knowledge of uh, our ancestors, but also we are channels of what is outside in the universe and in Mother Earth. And when I believe when Petra does the drumming, she's channeling freedom, she's channeling wisdom, and she's channeling all the vibration what her inner wisdom and her inner master is trying to project to us. And that's the magic when she's embodying and let flux all this energy with herself. And that's when we are feeling that vibration. And that's when the magic happens, when we are co-creating something that was never before. And just to hear the experience that she brought us just by the drumming. That's where Tantra and Shamanism give us the an embodiment experience. And as Petra says, if we are not open to that, we cannot feel what she was trying to give to us in this precise moment and how it connects it to the vibration of ourselves and how that experience can change us just by two minutes of what she had gave to us. And that's what embodiment happens. And it's very fast. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's why all these kind of holistic experience give us in the right, precise, divine time, you know. And uh, sorry to interrupt, uh, but I wanted to say this. The... No, 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 but you're not interrupting, not at all. And, uh... Yes. But uh, that's, that's a little bit of the taste of what we're going to have in this Saturday. And, uh, yes, and what? also touch. Touch. Um, <laughs> also touch. <laughs> tell us what you're going to be touching, Petra. Yes, I'm going to be touching. <laughs> yeah, well, we cannot touch in COVID times. Let, let us know how it's going to be a little bit. Or it's a surprise. I'm going to touch myself at least, you know. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> For those ones that they wanted to touch Petra on distance <laughs> and embody the power of Petra's touch. But you know, for being honest, is we are going to try to give an experience in order that you embody it 
the recognition of yourself. And I believe to, this is a nice, beautiful experience for both of us, uh, I think for Petra and for myself, to explore a different way to transmit Tantra. Uh, when the COVID time came, uh, when, uh, and I had to start to, to cancel all my events, and I was yes. sick of COVID, of course I could not do events. I was yes. sick for at least uh, one week and a half in hospitalized, and then afterwards the reconstitution or to, to get out of, to convalidate. Huh? Yeah. Then um, I said, what I'm going to be doing? Now, I cannot move. I have to be in confinement. And Tantra is about touching. Tantra is about connecting to the other one. Yes. And then, and we were talking, Petra and myself, before, and I told my experience. I'm uh, collaborating with a beautiful group in Spain that is called Etiosfera. And then uh, I did it before one conference, but it was just a conference and we didn't do a workshop. Mm -hmm. And this time with the people of Etiosfera, we say, okay, let's try to bring a really tantric experience online. And I had my doubts, very mm -hmm. beautiful doubts. But when we reach uh, 75 men online, and I was telling Petra that I was connecting there. I was feeling the sensation of those people coming back to me and give it back to them. Yeah. And then I say, the magic can be done in internet. And uh, that's what we are going to be trying to do this weekend. <laughs> and have a shamanistic tantric experience around embodiment. Yeah. Uh, myself, I'm going to be doing some kriyas in order to embody the energy of the sexual energy of yourself. And I believe that it's very powerful not to convalidate yourself with other people, not to uh, be expecting the other ones to be recognized uh, or ignite the sexual energy in you. Mm. I have had experience all the time Tantra Kriya Yoga is about coupling, about group, trios. But when I experienced Tantra Kriya Yoga for myself, because I need it on my body, Mm -hmm. Then it was a whole, whole complete difference. And that's what I wanted to, to give to you this, this weekend. And, uh, and I wanted to do, uh, Petra is going to do, give you some love cell ritual, but I wanted to give you an energetic, orgasmic touch experience. Let's see how it comes this weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, then it's going to be two hours in the morning. Uh, I don't know what time we are going to be starting, Petra. Uh, I have been writing between 10 and, and now I'm talking Finnish time. That 10 would be to, 10 to 12 and 14 to 16. Okay. Then that will be for us in European Central Standard Time, will be 9 to 11. And then you say, it, uh, 14 to 16, so then it will be 1 to, to 3. 1 to 3. Yeah. And uh, 9 to 11, uh, standard European Central Time, and 1 to 3. Then uh, there's going to be four hour experience of this, and uh, let's see how it comes, because it's going to be, and let's pray that Zoom is working with Facebook in order that it comes. And uh, I will try to review every day how it's becoming the Facebook Live with uh, Zoom. Mm. Uh, would you like to do? Would you like to say something else, uh, Petra? No, I I, I just think that um, we are we are energy beings, not only physical beings. So. Of course, it also works, you know, to work like distance and to connect with people like, like this, like we are doing now, of course, we can feel each other's energy. The only thing that is missing is the physical contact, you know, the, the, the pressure of, of feeling another body close. Mm. But on an energetic level, one can do a lot. Yeah. Let's try to do a final exercise regarding that. Would you like yeah. to be open? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I will ask you just to, 
to that your vertebral column where you are sitting is right straight up. Mm -hmm. That's our Shushumna channel trying to connect to Mother Earth and the universe. And this time I don't want it that you close your eyes. Yeah. Normally we try to go to the inside to go to the outside, but today I wanted to do something different. Look to the screen, Petra. Yes. Keep looking to the screen. Um, if the people are looking, try to look to one of us, you choose. And I'm going to be asking you to squeeze your perineum. Perineum is the muscle between, uh, the, this is in your pelvic floor. Just keep it squeezed and that is going to be root and nose. And now I'm going to be asking you that your palate, you are aware of it. And then you're going to use your tongue and you're going to caress the tongue. Very gentle. Your breathing is through the nostril, that means through the nose. You relax all your body. Very soft breathing. When you inhale, you squeeze. When you exhale, you relax. Connect with both energies coming from the pelvic floor, coming from your palate. Go deeper in your breathing every time. Every time that you are squeezing, you go deeper in the squeezing. When you reach that deep end, you are going to squeeze your stomach to your vertebral column like you were trying to do the diaphragm inside. Now start to smile. Like if you were sucking juice out of your pelvic area, your genitalia, that energy is going to your, to your heart. Now you're going to smile and you're going to think that out of your mind and that smile, you're soaking energy coming to the heart. Both energies are melting in the heart. Follow my brain and my movement. In. X. In. X. In. X. From looking to the screen, you are going to start to look what is outside of the screen. In. X. All those colors. In. X. All the environment. In. X. What is surrounded in your bedroom, in your house. All the things that they belong to you or they are over there. All the colors. I'm feeling the air. I'm feeling the vibration of every object. I bring it to my heart. Whatever is outside is inside. Whatever is belonging from me is inside. All the information that is coming from every object is coming to me, to my heart. Follow my breathing in, X, in, X, in, X, in. X, in, X, in, X, start to squeeze all your body, in, X, start to tense all your body. All that communication that comes from the heart, it goes to every cell of your body, in, X, in, X, in, X, in, X, in, help. Go, then look to the screen, tense your body, squeeze perineum, smile and make all that vibration of energy being in your body, except through mouth. <laughs> I'm talking about energies. I'm very honored, Petra, to have shared this experience with you. I'm honored that the people that they are seeing us, if you have done both experience, 
you see what we are going to be trying to do next weekend. Remember from 9 to 11, 1 to 3 in Central European time, and those ones that they are in the Nordic area is 10 to 12 and 2 to 4. Yes. And we're going to try to put together uh, a new information about it and just be certain to come uh, to the experience. Yes. Very welcome. How are you, Petra? Good. It was nice tingling. Mm. It started to tingle. The spring bubbles came. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope spring, that you have a spring rabbits around. <laughs> spring bubbles came to my body like. Now let's try to use this energy wisely. Those ones that they have generated a little bit and embodied that experience out of the tambour, the drum, and the singing of Petra and what had brought to you. Remember that every shamanic tantric experience gives you a little bit of a process. What had brought to you today? Petra. Anand. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. I'm honored to co-create with you. Really amazing. Yes, it is an honor to co-create with you, Anand. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are going to see you soon. Then yes. we are going to stop the recording. And that's the light. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's life. Okay, Petra, guys, I hope to see you on Saturday. Okay. Yes. See you. See you. Take yes. care. Bye -bye. Much love. Much love. <laughs>